Hello there everybody, Martin here from Affinity 4 Commander. Today we have a brand new 4 player map to show off from our latest sponsor, Cardmarket.com. So without further ado, let's take a look at those opening hands. I am playing my Gavi Nest Warden Cycling deck, and keep an opening hand containing Commander Sphere, Crystalline Resonance, Decree of Justice, The Locust God, Cascading Bluffs, Command Tower, and Myriad Landscape. I am playing my Atraxa Praetor's Voice Poison Counters deck, keeping an opening hand of Soul Ring, Farseek, Kodoma's Reach, Azuri Stalker of Spheres, Exotic Orchard, an Island, and a Forest. Steven is playing his Villas Broker of Blood Life Lost deck, and keeps a starting hand consisting of Big Game Hunter, Revenge of Ravens, Loth, Spider Queen, Myriad Landscape, and Two Swamps. And finally, Johnny is playing his Evelyn the Covetous Control deck. He gives a starting hand of Arcane Signet, Mind Stone, Chaos Warp, Displacer Kitten, Blasphemous Act, Exotic Orchard, and Sulphurous Springs. I win the die roll and play a tapped Prairie Stream before passing to Johnny. Johnny plays Exotic Orchard and passes. Alex plays a Forest and casts Soul Ring. With a big red target over his head, he ends his turn. What's happening but red, actually? Steven plays Myriad Landscape and passes to Martin. In my turn, I play Command Tower and tap out to cast Fluctuator. With nothing more to do, I pass the turn. Johnny starts his turn by playing Sulphurous Springs and casts Arcane Signet before ending his turn. In his turn, Alex plays an island and casts Kadama's Reach. He searches his library for a plains and a forest, puts the former into play and the latter into his hand before passing to Steven. Steven plays a swamp and passes. I begin my turn by playing Sulphur Falls and tap all of my lands to cast Commander's Sphere. Lacking a one drop, I end my turn. In his turn, Johnny casts Talisman of Dominance, closely followed by Mind Stone. Missing a land drop, he passes to me. Alex plays a forest and casts Farseek. He puts a swamp into play tapped from his library, casts the Evolution Sage, and passes. Steven plays a swamp and sacrifices his Mirror of Landscape to its own ability. He searches his library for two swamps, puts both lands into play tapped, and ends his turn. I start my turn by playing Glacial Fortress and cast my commander, Garvey Nest Warden. Out of mana, I pass to Johnny. Johnny once again fails to draw land and instead casts Merchant Scroll. He desperately searches his library for anything that may help him get more lands into play and eventually settles on Frantic Search. <laughs> Ironic. Johnny casts his newly acquired spell, drawing two, discarding two, and untapping both of his lands. Not yet finished drawing cards, Johnny casts Consider, milling one and then drawing. Unfortunately for him, Johnny drew exactly zero lands from either of his draw spells, and with a handful of cards he cannot cast, passes the turn. Alex plays Opal Palace as his land for turn, which he then uses to help cast Phyrexian Swarm Lord. Moving to combat, he attacks Steven with his Evolution Sage, dealing him 3 damage, and ends his turn. In his turn, Steven plays yet another Swamp, and pats all of his lands to cast Geode Golem. Johnny better hurry up and get a creature on the board or we're all in trouble. Happy with his play, Steven passes to Martin. I play Cascade Bluffs and cast everyone's favourite buggy boy, the Locust God. The bees! Not the bees! Choosing to keep back as many blockers as possible, I pass the turn. Johnny misses his land drop for the third turn in a row and casts this commander, Evelyn the Covetous. We each exile the top card of our libraries due to Evelyn's ETB, and Johnny plays the Waterfront District that he exiled from his own deck. Finally getting back on track, Johnny ends his turn. In his upkeep, Alex makes a slight misplay, creating a 1-1 insect token with infect for each opponent he has, rather than each poison counter his opponents have. I would like to point out there is a judge sat next to me who didn't catch this either. If only you knew what your own cards did. Thankfully though, this doesn't have any real impact on the game, and a totally oblivious Alex moves to combat. Here he attacks Steven with Phyrexian Swarm Lord, and not wanting to receive 4 poison counters at this early stage in the game, he blocks with his golem. Both creatures are destroyed, and Alex moves to his post-combat main phase. Here he plays a Swamp and casts his commander, Atraxa Praetor's Voice. 
She enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter, given that Alex used Opal Palace to help cast her, and Alex uses his remaining mana to cast Azori, Stalker of Spheres. Moving to his end step, he uses Atrax's ability to proliferate the plus one plus one counter on her, and draws a card thanks to Azori. Synergy. Pleased of how things are going for him, Alex passes to Steven. Steven begins his turn by casting Hedron Archive, which he then taps to help cast Wall of Blood. With nothing more to do, he passes the turn. I draw, and the almighty Locust God rewards me by creating a 1-1 insect with flying. Next I play Myriad Landscape and use Gavi's ability to cycle Decree of Justice for free. I pay 6 mana to the Sorcery's ability, creating 6 1-1 Soldier Tokens, create a 2-2 Dinosaur Cat with Gavi, and creates another insect thanks to Locust Daddy. Well, that escalated quickly. Moving to combat, I attack Johnny with the Locust God, dealing him 4 damage, and end my turn. Johnny plays the planes that he exiled from my library, and cast Blasphemous Act. I hate you so much right now, Johnny. The board is completely wiped of creatures, and Johnny cast a Splacer Kitten. With two mana still open, he moves to his end step, where Martin returns the Locust God from his graveyard to his hand. With no further interruptions, Johnny passes to me. In Alex's turn, he plays a Swamp, and recasts a Traxxer, once again using Opal Palace's ability. The Phyrexian Angel enters the battlefield of two plus one plus one counters, which Alex proliferates before passing the turn. Steven casts Revenge of Ravens, a card hated by token players everywhere, and then casts Vampire of the Dire Moon. Still one mana short of casting his commander, Steven ends his turn. I start my turn by casting Boros Signet, which I follow up by casting Azorius Signet. Not yet finished, I cast Stoic Champion, and then cast Crystalline Resonance. Not liking the look of this, Johnny counters my enchantment with Negate, flickering his Arcane Signet with Displacer Kitten. Deeply saddened by this, I pass to Johnny. Johnny plays Mountain, and passes, without casting anything. Because that's not suspicious at all. In his turn, Alex moves straight to combat, attacking Johnny with his commander. Johnny responds to this by casting Chaos Warp, untapping his signet with his kitty cat as he does so. Alex chooses to put a Traxxer back in the command zone, shuffles his library, and reveals the top card to be Knight's Whisper. In his second main phase, Alex casts his commander for a third time, once again using his palace to help him do so. Johnny responds to this by casting Rewind, and untaps Arcane Signet with the Displacer Kitten as he does so. A Traxxer is countered, Johnny untaps four of his lands, and an undeterred Alex casts Skrelv Defectomite. Johnny has no response to this, and Alex ends his turn. Steven begins his turn by playing Gaia Reach Sanitarium, and casts his commander, Villus, Broker of Blood. Johnny decides not to counter this for some reason, and a rather surprised Steven passes to Martin. I play an island and recast my commander. I then cycle a card for free, giving my champion plus two plus two, and create a dinosaur cat as well. Moving to combat, I attack Johnny with Stoic Champion, and he declares no blocks. He takes four damage, and I pass the turn. Johnny responds to this by flashing an Evelyn, exiling the top card of everyone's libraries. With a very powerful combination of creatures in play, Johnny proceeds to his turn. Johnny plays the Swiftwater Cliffs that he exiled with Evelyn, gaining a life as he does so. He then moves to combat, where he attacks me with both of his creatures, and I declare no blocks, taking 4 damage. With nothing more to do, Johnny ends his turn. In his turn, Alex moves straight to combat, attacking Johnny with his Defectomite. Really against contracting any poison counters, Johnny responds to this by flashing in Merfolk Trickster. He targets Scroll with the Merfolk's ability, then blocks the attacking might with the Trickster, destroying it. In his second main phase, Alex casts the Traxxer for the fourth time, but only puts three plus one plus one counters on her of Opal Palace. I forgot about the time Johnny counters her, alright. He increases this to four when he proliferates in his end step, and passes to Steven. Steven plays Memorial to Folly as his land for turn, and pays four life to activate Villus's ability twice. He targets Displacer Kitten in this way, and Johnny responds by sacrificing his Mindstone to draw a card. Not yet ready to let his kitten die just yet, Johnny casts Aetherize, to tap the cat blink itself with its ability. Now that is a creative move. However, Steven responds by paying four more life to activate Vils' ability two more times, once again targeting that pesky kitty. 
Unable to cast another spell, Johnny begrudgingly lets his prized cat go to the graveyard, and Stephen draws eight cards due to losing a life. Etherize then fizzles, given that no creatures are attacking, and Stephen casts Unstable Obelisk. He then enchants his commander with Kaya's ghost form, discards down to seven, and passes. Martin responds to this by sacrificing his mirrored landscape to put two planes into play from his library, and moves to his turn. I start my turn by recasting the Locust God, given that Johnny has no mana available to counter him with, and then cast Radiance Judgment. I destroy a Traxxer in this way, making Alex rather unhappy, and when questioned on this decision, I respond with... She's in my way to hitting your face. <laughs> <laughs> Moving to combat, I attack Alex of Gavi, Stoic Champion, and a Dinosaur Cat, and with Alex unable to block, I cycle a card of my commander's ability. Stoic Champion gets plus 2 plus 2, I create a Dinosaur Cat and an Insect, and Alex takes 8 damage. With nothing more to do, I end my turn. Johnny plays Temple of Malice, scrolling the top card of his library to the bottom, and casts the Exiled Knight's Whisper. He draws 2 cards, loses 2 life, and passes to me. Alex plays Dark Select Shores as his land for turn, and passes. Nothing to see here, folks. In his turn, Stephen plays a Swamp, and casts Lolf, Spider Queen. Johnny immediately counters this with Unwind, untapping three of his lands as the counter spell resolves, and Stephen uses the last of his mana to cast Bolas's Citadel. Unable to let a single spell resolve without having some involvement in it, Johnny sacrifices his Waterfront District to draw a card. The artifact then resolves, and Stephen pays 5 life to cast a Sir Comrade the Grim from the top of his library. Phyllis's ability triggers, drawing him 5 cards, and Stephen pays 3 more life to cast Profane Insight. Foulmire Knight is sent on an adventure, Stephen draws 3 from paying 3 life to cast a spell. He then draws another card as the spell resolves, followed by another card when he loses a life to that spell and pays for more life to cast Dread Presence. This man is going all out. Stephen draws four cards and not yet finished hurting himself, pays six more life to cast Lich's Mastery. He draws six new cards and finally finished lowering his own life total, moved to combat. Here he attacks Johnny with Villas, dealing him eight damage and discards down to seven. Sir Karant deals Martin, Johnny and I seven damage and Stephen ends his turn. Well that was certainly an interesting series of events. I draw, creating an insect token, and add a red mana to my mana pool with Commander's Sphere. I then sacrifice the sphere to draw a card, creating another insect, as well as a dinosaur cat with Gavi. Next I play Temple of the False God as my land for turn, and then cast Mad Ratter. Pity you've already drawn two cards this turn. Ugh, <sighs> tell me about it. Anyway, I activate the Locust God's ability, drawing, discarding, and creating a little bug. Not yet finished, I cast Spell Pyre Phoenix, and use their ETB to return Forsake the Worldly in my graveyard to my hand. Steven has a mild heart attack at the sight of this, but then remembers that Lich's mastery has Hexproof, and I move to combat. Here I attack Steven with my God, and Alex with Stoic Champion and two Dinosaur Cats. Revenge of Raven's triggers, losing me a life and gaining Steven a life, and Steven draws a card thanks to one of the many lines of text on his legendary enchantments. Combat damage then occurs, Steven takes 4, Alex takes 6, and Steven exiles 4 cards from his graveyard thanks to his mastery. He then draws 4 cards due to Vilas' ability, and I pass to Johnny. Johnny begins his turn by playing an island, and casts Fairy Seer. He scries 2, moving the top 2 cards of his library to the bottom, and casts the Riella, the Everwise that he stole from Martin's library. Not wishing to lose any of his dwindling life to Stephen's enchantment, Johnny passes without attacking. Chicken. Alex draws, examines his graveyard, and ends his turn. Gotta keep that cyclonic rift mana open. Stephen starts his turn by playing a swamp, triggering Dread Presence's ability. He chooses for the Nightmare to deal 2 damage to Martin, gaining himself 2 life in the process, and casts Lash Rive. Not liking the sound of a huge villas, Johnny counters the equipment with Sinister Sabotage, and puts the top card of his library into his graveyard. The, the graveyard, Johnny. The, the graveyard. Thank you. Not to be deterred, Stephen casts Stitch together, returning the Obnixless Unshackled from his graveyard to the battlefield. 
So Conrad pings each of his opponents for a single point of damage, and Stephen casts Dusk Legion Zealot. He draws a card, loses a life, then draws a second card thanks to his commander. These life loss synergies are something else. I'm at a loss for words. Moving to combat, Steven attacks me with his commander, and I declare no responses, taking 8 damage. Steven then discards down to 7, and Sir Conrad deals Martin, Johnny, and I 2 damage when 2 creatures are discarded in this way. Finishing off another solid turn, Steven passes to Martin. I draw, create an insect, and cast Glinthorn Buccaneer. Next I cast the Forsake the Worldly that I recovered last turn, exiling Steven's Revenge of Ravens in this way. Not yet finished, I activate the Locust God's ability, drawing, discarding, creating an insect, creating a dinosaur cat, and creating a 1-1 rat as I do so. That's a lot of creatures just for drawing a card. Moving to combat, I attack Steven with my Phoenix and all six of my Locusts, and he blocks one of the bugs of Obnixilis. This results in his life total dropping below zero, but not in his elimination from the game due to Lich's mastery. At least he can't use Boros' Citadel anymore. Steven then exiles 9 cards from his graveyard and draws 9 cards due to Villas, triggering Sir Conrad 4 times, followed by a further trigger when my Locust dies in combat. Realising that this would deal him lethal damage, Alex responds to the Knight's first trigger by casting Tainted Strike, giving Conrad plus 1 plus 0 and Infect. This results in Alex, Johnny and I taking 5 Infect damage rather than losing any life, keeping Alex in the game for a little bit longer, and I pass the turn. In his turn, Johnny plays an island and cycles Baron Moore. This triggers Stoic Champion, giving him plus two, plus two, and Johnny ends his turn. Oh, I was hoping that buff would somehow be relevant. Alex begins his turn by casting Karmic Guide, and returns the Azori Stalker of Spears in his graveyard to the battlefield of their ETB. He pays three mana to Azori's ability, proliferating the poison encounters that Johnny and I have twice, and draws two cards when he does this. Next, Alex plays Canopy Vista and passes to Steven. However, Johnny responds to this by casting an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. Alex, Steven and I return all non-land permanents we control to their owner's hands, and Steven now loses the game given that he has a negative life total. Now that is a sneaky move. We have Steven out of the picture, and I move to my turn. In Martin's turn, he recasts Garvey, and then recasts Boros Charm. Johnny responds by casting Fading Hope, targeting Gavi, and Martin responds to this by cycling a land. He creates a cat dinosaur, and his commander is returned to his hand for the second time in two consecutive turns. Now that's rough. Absolutely livid, Martin recasts Azorius Signet and plays Hallowed Fountain. He pays two life to have the land enter untapped, recasts Mad Ratter, and passes. Johnny cycles Cloud of Fairies and moves to combat. Here he attacks Alex if all three of his creatures that are able to do so, and Alex responds by casting Putrefy. He destroys Johnny's biggest creature in this way, but still takes lethal damage, knocking him out of the game. Johnny loses the land that he borrowed from Alex's deck, given that he is no longer in the game, and if nothing more to do, ends his turn. Martin starts his turn by recasting Spell Pyre Phoenix, this time returning the Decree of Justice in his graveyard to his hand. Next he recasts the Locust God, followed by Chasm Skulker, and moves to combat. Here he attacks Johnny with his Dinosaur Cat and Mad Ratter, and Johnny declares no blocks, taking 3 damage. Out of mana, Martin passes to Johnny. Johnny plays Underground River, and passes. That's concerning. Martin draws, makes an insect, and puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Chasm Skulker. Moving to combat, he attacks Johnny with everything except for his Ratter and insect, and Johnny responds by casting Cling to Dust. He exiles the Unwind in his graveyard, drawing a card, and lets out a cry of joy. He flashes in Torrential Gearhole, using the watery construct ETB to cast the Aether Eyes in his graveyard. Martin returns each of his attacking creatures to his hand, and moves to his second main phase. Here he recasts Fluctuator, and discards down to 7 before ending his turn. In his turn, Johnny moves straight to combat, attacking me with Evelyn and his Gearhulk. I block the construct of my Locust, taking 2 damage from Johnny's commander, and Johnny passes to me. I respond to this by cycling Decree of Justice, tapping all of my mana to create 10 1 1 soldier tokens with the spell's ability. Unable to counter this, given that I haven't actually cast a spell, Johnny casts the Cling to Dust in his graveyard for its escape cost. 
He exiles the Sol Ring in his graveyard to draw a card and reluctantly passes priority. Pleased with how that went, I proceed to my turn. Martin begins his turn by recasting Glinthorn Buccaneer and then moves to combat. Here he attacks Johnny with all of his creatures and Johnny once again escapes Cling to Dust, this time exiling Cloud of Fairies. He gains 3 life in this way and before blocks are declared, Martin casts a Chroma's Blessing. He gives all of his creatures protection from blue with this spell and now, unable to block, Johnny takes lethal damage, leaving Martin as the victor. Well, that is it for another game. I hope that you enjoyed watching Johnny take out two players only for me to sweep in and claim victory for myself. I'd like to give a huge thank you to each and every one of our incredible patrons, without whom we'd be unable to continue making content such as this. Also, be sure to check out our affiliate links in the video description, such as our cardmarket.com one. It won't cost you anything extra to make your purchases through these, but it really helps out the channel. And finally, don't forget that you can help to support us in four quick and easy ways, liking this video, subscribing, hitting that bell icon, and leaving us a comment, I read every one. That's it for now though everyone, we'll see you next time. Stay awesome!